All right, welcome into Study Ball, and today we're going to take a look at Josh Allen. I know a lot of people have been asking me to take a look at some of those other guys, um, you know, just to, to see what they're doing, how they're separating themselves from everybody else. Are they making some of the mistakes that other guys are making? And that's what we're going to take a look at today. I, you know, on our show, Game Day Morning, um, I called Josh Allen the human GCP, game-changing play, because he is always making big plays for his team. Sometimes he's trying to make the big play when he could just take something underneath. Sometimes he misses some things that could make the game easier, but the beautiful thing about a Josh Allen, unlike a lot of quarterbacks, is he can make up for it when he makes some of those mistakes by making one of those game-changing plays. And that's where these super talented guys have the ability to overcome some of the things that, uh, some of the mistakes that they make. Other quarterbacks don't have that ability. I was one of the, I didn't have that ability. I, I couldn't make up for mistakes, so I had to win the game mentally, and that's what I usually do here on QB Confidential and in Study Ball, is I talk about the mental side of it. I say, if you can do that, you've always got a chance. And then add all the special on top of it, and now the sky's the limit. So that's what I teach on here and yeah some guys can do it but we still want to get to the point where we're making the layups we're seeing the field we're making the easy plays so then when those aren't there we can make the special plays but we don't have to do 20 special plays a game uh, we need four or five because we're making the layups we're seeing the field we're getting the ball to the right guy so Josh Allen had a, a huge game four touchdowns big play after big play to get the win uh, up in Buffalo against a good Miami Dolphins team so let's take a look at the tape all right, so here we go. Early play in the game. I like the play design here. So what we're gonna run is we're gonna run a curl right here. We're gonna chip here and then we're gonna work to the flat. And then on this backside, we're gonna run a deep over right here. So we get middle close, so one high safety back here. We expect him to go deep. So what we're really looking at back here is we're going to check out this corner back here. So if this corner gets depth, then obviously he's in a position to take this away. But then we feel like we're going to throw the curl flat against that corner. If that corner stays down like he is to start, if he stays down there, now there's nobody up over the top in this window and we're going to try to throw the shot over the top. So I want you to watch, okay? So the corner's down, what's the corner do? Off the play fake, eyes on the corner. If the corner bails out and gets depth, then simply read this outside backer. If he goes to the flat, throw your curl and vice versa. So right here, right? I'm looking at this, once I see this corner bail right here, because here comes the over, right? There's my read. And this is my throw right here. To me, if I'm Josh Allen, take the easy one. This is what we talk about, take the layups. If that corner's already biting, if he's right on top of the corner or right on top of the curl, I understand it, go up over the top to your shot. But you know, these are the things sometimes that I talk about is trying to get the big play. This is stealing right here. I mean, it doesn't get any more open than that right here. And this guy is clouding this over right here. Just take your completion. Get your first down, keep moving, because you never know what's going to happen after that. So here, and again, he ultimately gets the guy to jump and gets the shot over the top, but we miss it because we're holding it longer than we want to because we're not getting a quick read. Just take your completion and rock and roll. Okay, I love this right here. So common concept. They're just running a post right here, the over, and then they're going to get the back in the flat. Okay, so this is one of those reads that, again, you see one high safety back here. He gets to the middle of the field. We're pretty much saying post is dead. We're not taking that unless we come back and read this guy and he jumps the over. But if he gets depth right now, then... He gets depth right there, okay? So once he gets that much depth, that post is off. So now it becomes a high-low over here off of this outside linebacker over to flat, okay? And here's what I love. Josh comes out, he recognizes that, 
and he finds this body right here. Okay, so this body is actually getting some depth. So in this situation, you could easily say, okay, you take this flat, you're not wrong, there's a lot of space there, check down because that guy's getting depth. But Josh sees this guy and understands where he's going, and so this is what we call an over hole shot. So a lot of times these overs are thrown up over the top of this flat defender as he gets flat, we lay it out over the top, out here by the numbers, so we can truly high-low this guy. Sometimes, when that guy gives us a quick read and he gets a little bit of depth here, if we feel like there's a window between him and the next linebacker, instead of throwing it up and over because he's got too much depth to throw it up and over, if I was gonna throw it up and over, I take the flat. But if I see this quick enough and feel like those linebackers split, now I can hit what we call an over hole shot. So I'm hitting a hole shot in between those two linebackers and I'm gonna drive this throw instead of throwing this up and over. He recognizes it quickly. You see it, quick hitch, boom, balls out, drives it in that hole. So now this guy's out of position because he's gotta come back in to make the, the play. The inside guy's out of position because we're not throwing it over him. He's gotta move out to make the play. So we split those two guys. Great throw, great read, great understanding, and it leads to a huge play early in this game. All right, so this is something that I pay attention to. When they get down close to the red zone, one thing I wish Josh would do better is get back, set up, and be ready to throw the football. When he gets down to the red zone a lot of times, it feels like he just goes back and doesn't really set to throw anything quick, looks to bounce, bounce, and then run and create, which he's great at creating, and he makes a lot of great plays that way. But there's a lot of things there to be had instead of making it hard by, you know, by having to you know, run out of everywhere and, and make these throws when he's full sprinting to the right-hand side and people are chasing him and, and guys are off schedule, all that stuff. So I'd like to see him settle in the pocket a little bit more in the red zone. So just settle. Right, so look how quickly he's moving. Like, why are we moving already? Okay, so here's what we're gonna have. We're gonna have a corner route right here, and then our back, I think, is gonna have a choice, but even if he doesn't have a choice, he, he runs this angle back to the inside. So what they're doing here is they're spying this guy on Josh Allen. So if Josh just goes and sets, he has a chance to hold that guy with his eyes, and when he holds him with his eyes, You'll see it, nobody back here. He's got a chance to hit that little angle right there, okay? So again, you, you can't hit it here because he's moving and he moves this guy right into the throw. Otherwise, that's the easy throw, right? I hit this right here out of his break and now he's rolling and he's gotta win the one-on-one -on -one, and we're rolling to the end zone. Plus, I don't have to wait, I don't have to create, I don't have to worry about pressure coming, I could just hit it. Now, this is where I talk about he makes up for it. You know, he makes up for it. This guy's spying him, he's gonna go here. You know, and the reason I say that's the easier throw because you notice this corner route goes inside the defender, so the defender's gonna be outside of him. So it makes it a harder throw when we're throwing an outside throw when we've got outside leverage by the DB. So the easy throw is the inside throw. It's a quicker throw, get the ball out of your hands, but impatient, takes off. But here's what I'm talking about. But he makes an unbelievable throw on the run, over the top, Perfect throw on his guy, and he gets a touchdown. And so, you know, we come back and we're like, just great play. But these things don't always happen. Not everybody can make these kinds of throws on the move, so you got to play more on schedule. Settle right there. Be ready. Hold this backer inside. Hit that. If you can't hold that backer inside and he takes that away, then just work up over the top to your corner route then instead of bailing and having to make it a creative play, play a little bit more on schedule. Touchdown though, okay, we're all happy, we're all moving. Throws these really, really well. They'll do a lot of this, okay, where they're gonna basically RPO it in a lot of situations, hard run fake. Sometimes it's not an RPO, it's just a hard run fake, looking for the middle high, one high, which is what Miami plays a lot, and then the skinny post off of it. But I just love the way he uses his feet here. See how he pops his feet? Quarterbacks, coaches, 
Boom, boom. Right? He's not moving his feet separately. He's moving his hips to reset, hitting that back foot, balls out of his hands. Love it. Let's look at it from the end zone copy. I love it. One fluid motion. Fake, pop your feet, set, throw. Fake, pop your feet, set, throw, balls out, efficient, accurate, really, really good at doing those kinds of things. Now he does this really well here. So what Miami loves to do is blitz zero. So again, you see nobody back here. They're playing man to man across the board, man to man, man to man, right? Man to man, man to man. So the blitz zero, you'll notice because everybody up is at the line of scrimmage, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six guys up there rushing. We've only got five guys blocking. So blitz zero allows them to bring an extra guy on the blitz. So in this particular case, the extra guy on the blitz is right here. What we like to do with blitz zero because there's nobody back is we like to attack the middle of the field. We like to take the shot down the field, especially when they're pressed because there's no help back there for these guys. So that's what Josh is gonna try to do here. He understands he's hot off of this guy. So he's gonna buy a little bit of time and fade a little bit away from it, which I love, right? Know where your pressure issue is. You don't wanna fall into pressure on the other side, but you've gotta buy time and you've gotta to continue to fall away from the pressure. So he's gonna have an inside fade right here that he's gonna to try to hit to Stefan Diggs. And then Gabe Davis right here is gonna run this under. So he wants to come back and hit the big play, which again is what we like. He knows pressure, so he's not settling his feet and waiting because he gets hit here. But he does a great job of realizing as he goes back to throw this, this corner falls off as well. So great job of knowing what he wants to do and not making it a wasted play by already predetermining, even though he's got it in his mind, I want that inside fade. But I also know I've got an under there, so if that inside fade doesn't come open or something happens, I gotta get back to my under quickly instead of just throwing it away because it doesn't win. So great job right here of wanting the deep one, wanting the deep one, realize I don't have it, and having an answer. Having a pressure answer, buying time, fading away, boom, go get yourself a completion, even though it doesn't turn out exactly like you thought it would before the snap. So key for quarterbacks to understand and have a plan. Have a plan A and have a plan B. If plan A doesn't work out and it doesn't, right? We only got seconds. So you got to have it in your mind what I'm going to do if that corner falls off, if that inside fade doesn't work, boom, hit that under, get a positive play. All right, this is about details here, okay? Little things that, you know, to me are really, really important. Now, it's a little bit harder. We're on the backside hash here. But what we're going to run on this play is we're going to run a corner route. We're going to run a flat route. We're going to run a quick over route, okay? So it's common play. It's kind of a pure progression play for the quarterback. Flat, corner, over, or cross, okay? And so, once again, you see it's a blitz zero type situation, okay? So blitz zero, I know I'm going to be hot. In this particular case, offensive line is gonna slide the other way. So this guy becomes my hot guy right here. All right, I talk about details, all right? A couple different things. First thing, I want you to look at Dawson Knox right here, all right? So Dawson Knox is gonna be the one running the corner route. So one of two things is really, really important to me right here, okay, is your release becomes so important because what I'm really trying to do, and, and this is to me the big picture, is when I call this play, you always ask yourself, who are you trying to get open on this particular play? And so if my number one read is that flat, then I'm trying to get the flat open. And why that's important, because the secondary routes to me should be run based on what you're trying to get open. So I'm trying to get the flat open first, especially in a man-to-man -man situation. So what we're really trying to do is we're trying to rub this guy. We're trying to force this guy to get caught up somewhere, somehow in this coverage so I can pop this guy open in the flat, right? That's what we're trying to do. So one of two things, either A, I want, because Dawson Knox is in such a tight split right here, I don't want him to release inside. 
Because if he releases inside, you see the location of this linebacker. If he releases inside, this linebacker is going to run straight over the top and he's going to run to cover this. And now we're in a bind because first I've gone inside leverage, right? I've gone inside to give the corner outside leverage on a corner route, which isn't good. And again, let's run it real quick here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So he goes inside, right? He goes inside. What's the linebacker do? Runs right over the top. So he's right there to cover this. By doing that as well, I've lost leverage with the corner, kind of like we saw earlier, which makes this a harder throw for the quarterback. So it doesn't give us any advantage over here against man coverage. So Kurt, what would you do? All right, what would I do is if I'm in this tight alignment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna widen my release. I'm gonna try to gain a leverage outside. Now again, I can't widen all the way out here and lose all my space to the corner, but I'm gonna try to widen and get outside leverage on that corner. Okay, so I'm gonna try to help myself to win first, but the other thing it's going to do because I'm so tight is when I go outside leverage or when I go outside release and push up, I'm going to be in a position to force that guy to have to do something, right? Now he's gonna have a better chance to get caught up in the wash because I'm going outside. Even if I start outside and then have to jump back inside because the corner holds outside leverage, it still forces that guy to have to come through me to cover the flat. So it's a little detail that makes a huge difference. Okay, the other thing I would do, or, or I should say, or the other thing I would do, I would start dot, dot, duh, duh, Dawson Knox out wider. So when I start him out wider, so if Dawson Knox is out here by the outside edge of the numbers, we can now inside release to run the corner if we want to create the spacing that we want. But with us doing that, it gives me more space away from this linebacker. So now I get the opportunity when I release inside once again to, as I run my route, right, have a natural rub by this linebacker because I'm from an outside position. I can keep my release outside of that linebacker. So he's got to come through me once again to cover the flat. So either way, we're getting to the same location, but we're using our release to A, help us win on the corner route, but B, keep our spacing and force it to be really, really hard on that linebacker to run through us and cover this flat. Because right here, you're gonna see, they're gonna bring the blitz zero. This guy's free. I'm hot if I'm Josh Allen, okay? What options do I have? I wanna throw this flat, I can't. Because I released inside, I was in a tight alignment and I released inside, linebacker comes up over the top and covers the flat, okay? My second option is to hold it and try to throw the corner out. Not a good option either because I inside released from that tight alignment. Guy's sitting outside of me, I've got no throw there because we're leaving him in a good position, okay? The third option would be to get back to this cross, but that's really, really tough with a guy running free right in your face. So you see it right here. We don't really have an option. And because of it, what? It becomes an automatic throw away into me, a play that should be really, really good against this coverage. But the details of this guy make all the difference. Be wider, run through that linebacker to open up the flat. Okay, if you're going to be tighter, outside release, outside release to start, just making yourself, putting yourself in a position where that linebacker has to work through you and the DB that's covering you. And all you need is that little bit of hesitation or him going up over the top. And now we've got our flat and we're good to go. Okay, they come back actually the very next play of the game. They come back and run the same play again. Now it's a little different coverage right here, but, but it's similar, but it's similar. Okay. They're going to bring pressure. It's not a blitz zero. Look, you see the safety that's sitting back here, but here once again, okay. You see right here, this linebacker steps up. I, it it lo sure looks like he should be in man because everybody else is in man. Same thing should happen, but all we need is that hesitation by that guy. So whatever helps us get that is where we get an advantage here. He steps up and is out of position. Same idea, now we hit the flat and that flat walks into the end zone for a touchdown. But that's what we need. We need this guy to just do something. We need him to hesitate. We need him to run into us. We need him to go up over the top and slow him down so we can get this flat. So same details apply there. Just so happened that he messed it up on his own. 
in a tighter alignment and we get a touchdown on that same play. I love this right here. Okay, so this particular play is a play we call under. Okay, so they're gonna wrap this guy back around. When I run it, I like this guy being flatter here. So he doesn't fall into the safety. So it's not a seam, it's a true like 12, 14 yard in route. And then from there, we're gonna run the under to the outside. So anytime we get a too high shell, this too high shell right here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to isolate this guy high, low, because he should be the only guy that's there. On the other side, what they're gonna run is it looks like they're gonna run kind of a choice route here and a go route, okay? So we like that side better when it's not too high or when there's two guys underneath to this side. We don't wanna go there, right? Because we've got two guys coming here, two guys underneath, we don't like it. One guy underneath, we like it over here. So it's kind of your you know, middle closed beater, one height beater up to the top, your two high beater down to the bottom. Now the key on the two high beater is this guy right here, right? So I said, we wanna isolate one guy. If this linebacker right here works back to this side, right? It just becomes two guys underneath and we've gotta know, you know, what he's doing. So we gotta see him first. You know, one thing that helps is we put our back number three over to that side. So it's normally going to turn the Mike linebacker to the number three receiver, plus it's also the wide side. And so those two things, when guys are playing Tampa two, running that guy out in the middle, those are the two keys. So like the setup of the play right here, but for Josh, quarterbacks, come back and verify the Mike linebacker. What's the Mike linebacker do? Turns and opens, eyes to the top. Eyes to the top, bang. As Soon as I get that, I know I've got my isolation on this backside linebacker. Nice job by Josh right here. Uses his feet a little bit. Notice he sets his feet a little bit flatter, almost as if he's going to go uh, outside to that guy. What that does is it moves this defender just enough, and now he wraps that back behind him. Wraps it back behind him. Nice throw. Got to make this catch right here. We miss it, okay? Details down here, okay? I think this is Gabe Davis again. I'm not sure who this is down on the bottom, but watch, he's running an under route and he outside releases. Don't outside release, right? So just watch his route right here. He goes outside, can't get back in. Like, he just put himself in no man's land. You go outside the corner, it widens everything. It, it brings the corner involved, all that stuff. Okay, these speed releases. I don't care if you set him outside, get back inside, push up on him and hold your position so we can truly isolate that guy. You go outside, you bring an extra guy to the party and it puts pressure on your quarterback. But good job by Josh, seeing the Mike linebacker, using his feet to move that linebacker underneath and then making the throw down inside to Dawson Knox. All right, two things right here, okay? So we're coming across, okay? Always we, what we call indicators, we're motion Dawson Knox across. Number nine, chases him across. We know that we've got a man-to-man -man situation right here, all right? So, man-to-man, -man, all right? Just real quick, we'll look at the uh, combination right here. So, combination, it looks like we're going high corner, Stefan Diggs, flat corner, Dawson Knox, <laughs> flat over here with the back. So, we got a three-level play. This is a good man play as well as a good zone play. So it's a good man play again as we come over here and we're releasing these two guys. It's a great chance to just pop the flat there. But a lot of times in man coverage, we get inside leverage man. So we've got outside breaking routes. So that's a good combination over there. If the team's gonna bring pressure, sometimes we're gonna think underneath shorter throws first. So that's a possibility. So we look at that, right? And you see guy, playing man on the back, gets caught up because of our release pattern here, gets caught up. If he came to this side, probably throwing the flat right now, gets the interference and we got a shot. If he has time, there's also a shot for the high corner because as we release with all those bodies in there, uh, some interference is created on the guy that's got Stefan Diggs and he's got a shot up over the top. So if he's going to this side, 
that's a possibility, right? You notice this guy drops down what we call robber. So cover one, robber. Man-to-man -man is cover one, okay? One safety that's playing zone on the back end. That's what cover one means. How many guys do we have playing zone coverage on the deep end of the field? We've got one, okay? Robber. That safety is dropping down to the middle of the field and trying to rob anything that comes to the middle of the field. So what Josh looks at over here is they've got double slants back to this side. I like double slants against man-to-man, -man, but what we have to know is we're really not thinking the inside slant because the robber's coming there. So I'm really thinking man-to-man, -man, I'm gonna take this outside slant right there. So I am getting re ready, I'm set. I, I know it's man-to-man -man coverage here. I'm not thinking inside. Get your feet set and be ready to throw the outside slant. So right here, he gets it, okay? One thing I don't like is, is he peeks the left first, which I understand he might be peeking left to see if he's got a hot and he's got to get the ball out here. But the key here is that if you're hitting a, a quick throw to the right-hand side, you should beat a hot with your throw anyway. So you can't really delay your footwork back to the slants or to a quick throw by looking hot over here to the left. So if you're thinking about a hot to the left, then stay left and just throw it to your back. If you don't care and you say, I'm gonna just throw the double slant so the ball's gonna be out, get your eyes back there. Cause here's the thing, right? Now it's kind of twofold. He's not ready to throw it here and his outside receiver is breaking and that's where he should be throwing the football. Ball should be going to the outside receiver. But I'd like to see Josh set a little bit quicker and know, hey, I'm going back to that side set and be ready to throw. But his receiver doesn't help him out. Notice his receiver takes two quick steps and goes. Once again, receivers understand what a quarterback is doing. These are five yard routes. So normally if this corner's off, you are running this thing up to five yards and hitting a slant. Say third, uh, you know, it's your third step. Okay, so inside foot up, outside foot, inside foot, outside foot, we stick, and then we come inside. But the timing is so important because our footwork doesn't change no matter what happens. If you're running a slant, my footwork stays the same to the slant. So I need the timing on the outside to be slant timing, even if you have press. So even if it takes you longer at the line of scrimmage to separate from this guy, okay, that's fine. Just as long as you separate and come inside at the exact same timing that you would if that guy wasn't up in your face playing press coverage. But if you rush it, as he rushes it here, Josh gets back to him and Josh realizes, I'm not ready. He's already coming in. He has squeezed the distance between these two guys, right? That's the other part of it. When we run these double slants, I want this guy to get out of there and clear it out. Then I want this guy to be a little bit later so we can clear out that window, create space to the outside and have a nice window to throw. Josh is a little bit late. And as he's a little bit late, his receiver's a little bit quick. And now timing is all off. We've got third and four right here, critical play right here. And we're both off just a little bit. And with us being off, the window here is really, really tight. Don't feel comfortable because I'm not ready to throw it into that tight window, combination of those two things make us now have to scramble. Now again, hey, we bailed ourselves out. I was a little bit late as a quarterback. The route wasn't as technically sound as I would like it. Messed us up a little bit, but Josh Allen will bail you out. Good scramble drill, right? They see this, turns back, makes himself available to Josh who's running out that side. Josh is able to make these special throws on the move. All right, so trying to figure out <clears throat> exactly what this concept is here. So they're here, and then they're gonna run there with Cook. They're gonna run what looks like an in route here with Diggs. We've got a shallow route uh, coming from Dawson Knox, and then we've got a choice route <clears throat> and an in route over to this side, okay? so. Actually, it looks like Cook just has a flat right here. So, reason this is important because I need to know where to start my eyes. I motion down here with Cook. This guy motions is in a tight position with him. I'm not really thinking the flat. If that guy's playing tight press coverage on the line of scrimmage to my back who's running a flat, I'm never gonna get separation. So, that thing is really off 
right now. So now I've got to decide, okay, what, what are my options? What I would be thinking is first we've got this choice here. So I like the choices. I like throwing it underneath here, but I, I like the choices. And then I would probably read down here, um, to my choice route and then work back from there to my high low to this side. Now, if you don't like the choice, you don't feel like you can get to the choice and then back to that high low, then you're probably just saying to yourself, okay, I'm reading this high low right now. I want to be set and be ready to get this football out. But if you just pop your feet and set and look here, I think we got a great chance to hit that. Okay. Otherwise, what we're seeing here is you see this body right here. I'm going to read that guy right there. So we're going to have man to man coverage. So I've got to count on my two guys to win, but I need to see what that guy who's I think spying Josh Allen, but what he does, it's kind of like a middle safety. What's he going to do here? If he gets depth, I got to look to hit my shallow that's crossing. If he stays down, I got to look to throw the one up over the top. So right here, right? Ready to throw, ready to throw, seeing that, there's your throw right there. Dawson Knox coming out the backside right there. Okay. If I'm going over to this left side, what I have to realize is they've got three on two. And so it makes it a little bit harder. And why I would probably go back to the other side if I don't think I'm going to get this choice right now. But I want to see Josh set his feet. So again, see him kind of looking around and bouncing. Okay. Down in the red zone, what are we doing? We're looking around and bouncing. Know what you're seeing. Okay. So fine. Peek this flat over here, which is what he looks like he is looking at first. Okay, that's covered. Now, know what you're looking at. Get back and read this guy. This guy stays flat. Have your feet set. Be ready to rip it and then work to your shallow from there. But a lot of bouncing, not really sure what he wants to do. So it's like, I'm going to buy enough time until I go and create. Remember on this play, there was eight seconds on the clock when they snapped this ball. So that's the other thing. Down here, eight seconds. Get back. Know what your read is. If you don't have it, throw this football away and you can kick and get three points. You do not want to buy a bunch of time and run out of time and not get any points here at the end of the half. So, you know, another great job by Josh, right? He does all that and it's like, oh man, if, he, if this ball's incomplete, now we're mad on the sideline and go, you can't do it. You can't hold it down here. You got to see it. You got to rip it. But bails himself out once again. Great play by him and the running back Cook who starts across, works back to Josh. Great throw as he's falling out of bounds. We get a touchdown. But again, not everybody can do this. So you got to understand what your issues are. Three on two over here, fine. X that out, okay? Peek back here to the flat. Tight coverage, don't have it. Understand where the problem guy is. Read your high-low. Get the ball out of your hands. Stay on time and live for a field goal if you have to. Okay, so this is a play that everybody calls mesh. Okay, so on mesh, what we do, okay, so we've got an out here, that's an alert. If you like it, you can take it. Okay, from there, we're gonna run a guy to the middle of the field. Then we're gonna run two guys on the mesh, meaning one high, one low, both on shallow routes. And what we're really trying to do is whoever goes underneath, in this case, it's Stefan Diggs, we're trying to rub his guy that's playing man. Okay, so as we come over, this guy's trying to get in the way of the guy that's running man with Stefan Diggs. We create interference, and this guy comes out the backside in man-to-man -man coverage. Okay, it's a play that's all over football, every level, okay, especially when you, you think you're going to get man. And so it's really well done here, okay? He does a nice job forcing this to come over, and we're going to get Stefan Diggs right there. Nice completion, nice read. We're good to go. All right, I'm going to go back to what's on this side with the running back okay so a lot of people run something out this back side with this back a lot of times it's a shoot route i like to run what i call a bullets route so the bullets route is it's not a straight swing route okay and it's not down the field in an automatic shoot route it's in between both of them so it's this guy getting with getting with but falling down field a little bit and then turning it into a shoot route off of that okay why is that important because a we don't necessarily just want to run a swing because then if this guy's tight and attacks downhill he can go cover that and we don't have an option okay we don't want to just run a shoot 
because now if this guy's playing soft, we don't have the opportunity to hit the wide. So we run the bullets. So now we get the best of both worlds that as we go and get width here, if this guy stays soft, we can take him right now. If this guy attacks the line of scrimmage and comes down, we still have the ability to run by him right here. So as Cook runs this, to me, he's a little bit too much downhill because you see the guy that's covering him is seven, eight yards away from him. When I see that, when I see this look and I see press coverage right here, and I think this stack backer is covering my back, I want to try to get it to my back right now, put it on him, almost like a toss, catch it, flip it to him, get it on his body, let him go one-on-one -on -one with his shoulders turned against that linebacker right there. But it's key that we don't fall down the field too much because it's hard to make this throw. And you're going to see that right here is Josh wants to make that throw, but because he's fallen down the field, I don't like the spacing. This defensive end gets in the way that I would love to see Josh catch it here saying, I, I like what I've got, catch it, be ready to throw it. If you don't like the angle at that point, then get your drop and settle and wait for this shallow right here, but just a little detail with that back that can make this play better and it gives you options. I don't have to hope that we get the mesh because I've got a great opportunity with this distance to get it to my back, easy completion, but it has to happen right now. I gotta get it to him right now, get a little bit wider, turn your head, be under control, Josh, just flip it to him, boom, let him go. He wins the one-on-one -on -one. a lot of times. I like that matchup and we've got a shot. Because see, now we're in no man's land. I get down the field too much. It's hard to hit it there because now he's cut down the space. I can't get up over the top of him. So we've made it easy on the defense in this particular case. But nice job reading through it and getting it to our crosser. I like this read right here. So notice we go with a four strong Look right here, one, two, three, four, okay? One guy on the backside, why do we do that? We do that oftentimes, so we get the defense to all push over in this direction, and oftentimes we use our backside guy with some kind of one-on-one -on -one back there, so we're trying to get him isolated. The other thing that we can do with this is we wanna get everybody pushed to the strong side. We're gonna bring that backside guy over in that direction, and then we're going to try to work the backside off of that. And so working the backside, we're pushing everybody strong. And I'm using Stefan Diggs to work the backside if they void it. If they don't void it and they just play zone, then I still have a great concept here with my in shallow that I can work back here against zone. Okay. So when we do that, what am I looking at? Okay. I'm looking at first and foremost, this area right here. As a quarterback, I want to see what the defender that's supposed to play that area is doing. So it's this guy right here. Okay, so if this guy's in an off position back here, I'm going to peek at him whether he's off or press. But if he's in an off position, I peek at him and he stays high. I know this throw to Stephon Diggs is gone and my eyes come right back to the front side for my read over here. But if I get this guy down or if I get this guy in a man-to-man -man position I'm going to peek him and if he chases he chases my shallow across the field I know this is the easiest throw this is an easy throw an opportunity for a big play and they voided that whole area I want to attack it right here so Josh does a great job right here coming back where do eyes go eyes go over here he's looking to see what's going on on this back side because he knows not only is his main man there, but he loves to throw this over, all kinds of space. He's really good at, they're really good at it. Good job peeking the backside right now. Now here's the only problem. Only problem is he's got to buy time. So he gets pressure, buy time, move, because here's the thing, they're going to run this over. And if you can throw this on time, now as a quarterback, I got a chance to throw my guy open. I throw it early enough, I can flatten him if the coverage says flatten him. I can throw him up the field and throw him away from that defender if the coverage says that. I let him get too far, so all that movement, now Stephon Diggs gets too far over there. And what I mean by that is because the defender has already figured out what the route is. 
The timing is I can't lead him as much as I would like. So now if I drive it, he's in a position to fall underneath it. And he knows I'm running out of space if I'm going to throw it up over the top because I'm starting to squeeze the sideline and the angle becomes really, really tough. I can't throw my guy open. So that pressure makes it hard. He knows where he wants to go, but you see, that's what the defender does. On the throw, he's looking to undercut it here and knock this away. So Josh has to try to throw it up and over with this tough angle. Stefan Diggs has to change his course and they just miss an opportunity for a big play. Pressure caused it, but I love the read. Josh knew exactly where he was going. If he's on time, I think this is a big play. Pressure throws it off just a little bit, okay? And then you see coming from there, again, don't like the spacing. We're gonna chip this guy right here, okay? Again, we gotta know when to chip and when not to chip. If we chip that guy, he doesn't get out because he's running to the flat. He doesn't get out to the flat, so we bring another guy to the party because these two guys are running to the same area when we're trying to get this high-low right here. So we have to know when we can chip and when we can't chip. When it's gonna get involved in the play, when we need it to be out quickly so my quarterback can have a read. I don't care if you chip here, but if you chip, I'd rather you go back to the other side so I can clean this up for this high-low right here. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Chip, and look, right? So my shallow's coming. Look at this extra body. That extra body is in the way right here because he's covering the flat. So now I got all these bodies in the area of what I'm trying to read over to that side. By the same token, we bring this guy underneath the in. If I wanna try to throw the in, I'm bringing an extra body over there. So it's understanding that, e, that A, this guy can be out here fast, so I've already cleared this guy out, and then this guy comes as a secondary guy, or just use him to go somewhere else. So maybe we use him going backside, so if we don't like the over to Stefan Diggs, we've got a guy recovering to our eyes to that side. I still got my high low and two guys to read on this side if my eyes go that way, but it's so important as coaches to understand when chips are important, how chips can be a benefit to a particular concept, but also how they can be a negative to a particular concept because my guy goes to the wrong spot or he doesn't get out fast enough, he doesn't pull a linebacker, he brings an extra guy to the party, all stuff that's really, really important when designing plays. Okay, so here's, again, things that we want to do to make the game easier. Love this concept. It's kind of like another under concept. So we're going here. We're going to run this guy on an in. And I don't know if this is a read or if this is a called play, but I love this. So we're going to have, um, we're going to have our receiver right here come up, and he's going to push down the sideline. Okay? So... When I say read, I don't know if they're trying to create a rub here. So this guy's playing a man-to-man. -man. So as he pushes up, if this guy gets caught underneath, sometimes I see them keep this on a shoot route here because that guy's got caught underneath and they get a rub and they throw it up over the top. And then if this guy goes up over the top and runs up over the top so he doesn't give us the rub, you'll see this receiver push up and then he comes back underneath, okay? So whether this is a read or a called play, I'm not really sure. But when we come over to this side, that's what I'm looking at as a quarterback, okay? So my underneath guy is gonna be my first read. So I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna read this defender. If this defender stays flat, it's gonna let me know that A, he's matched to this. So I either have a shot for uh, the shoot route or I'm just gonna recover back underneath to the end because he's cleared out. If that defender goes up over the top, then I'm going to think underneath throw first, okay? That's why it's important, right? We're going to come back over here. His eyes are going to get over here. What's that defender do? Defender does this, goes up over the top. Watch my receiver here on the under. Eyes are over here. Be ready. There it is. There's your throw. There's your throw. First down throw. There he is. I think that is Cole Beasley. Wasn't sure. Okay, so you've got your throw right there. Eyes are over to this side. Take it. Take your easy throws, take your layups. Okay, what's gonna happen here? Boom, holds in there, sack fumble. Okay, recovered by Miami. 
The throw is right there. Take it. Take it. Understand where your eyes need to be, right? Press, press, press. Okay, I got press. So now that I've got press, I've got middle closed. Okay, what does that tell me? That tells me this play is pretty much dead. I've got a safety in the middle. I've got press man. Not a good option. Gone. So now it goes to the next two guys. Okay, again, don't know if that's a read, but whatever that is, if I'm reading this defender first. Okay, so I'm going to read this guy. If I don't have him on the under or the shoot, then I come right back to the in if I'm going to that side right here. Ball's got to be out of his hands. Got to get that completion. We complete that right there. Nice little pickup on first down. Missing the easy one. Trying to create after that can lead to bad plays at times. Okay, like this play design right here. So we're gonna run up to the corner. Out here, we're gonna run a quick slant, okay? So that's where I'm reading first, okay? So as I come out, notice this safety goes up over the top. So I've gotta be aware of that safety right there. So as I come out, my eyes are gonna go to this safety first. I just wanna see what that guy does, okay? So I want you to, to watch him, okay? So that safety, I'm gonna see him, okay? Now, I gotta be ready. Again, gotta be ready. Watch Josh's feet. See how we're already breaking here and Josh's feet aren't set yet. Why is that important? It's important because if this safety, he starts high. When he starts high, I'm telling myself, this is the throw. Once he starts high, I say, my guy is gonna beat that guy. I am ready to throw that quick slant right now. If that quick slant doesn't win, then I'm gonna recover over to this corner route. But we gotta be ready, gotta have our feet ready right there, okay? That ball's gotta be ready to come out, okay? All right, a little bit late on that. Notice that the safety starts that way and then he comes down to double, all right? No problem, if you can see that. If you're a little bit late, gotta eye that safety again. You see him come down, then the throw comes over the top to the corner route, okay? Important details with the corner route, okay, is have to understand that the quarterback is going to read that quick slant first. So I need to spend some time on my corner route. Outside, good job, outside release. Now push, push, push him into the end zone. Hold him off. Understand the timing so my quarterback can read this. And by the time he normally gets off of that, I haven't broken my corner route yet. So now my corner route or my quarterback has a chance to hit my corner route because he's got time to throw it. You watch here, Josh is looking to throw the outside one and he's just getting his read now and the corner route is already coming out of this throw, right? There's no chance, I don't have the depth. So even if I was gonna go throw this, there's bodies underneath it because I don't get the depth to allow me to throw it up and over the top. I let it be quick so the defender falls underneath me. I want my timing to be better, okay? Push up, push up. What else does pushing up do? Well, what it might do is it might push this guy. Once that guy sees me pushing further up into the end zone, he may think, well, I gotta take care of what's underneath, and now I open this guy up because I don't let that safety get involved. So little details down here become so important, but with all that, okay, I don't have this because they double it. I don't have this because it happens too quick. They do a great job here, and we saw the plays earlier. They love to run these crossers down here. So I love this little change up here that it looks like Dawson Knox is gonna run across. He's pushing up, he goes inside the guy, sticks him high, and comes back to the outside. So now, like the play design, I've got a quick slant option right there. If the timing's good, I can go up and over the top to the corner, so I got a slant to a corner, and then the timing is perfect to let my eyes and feet be out in front of it and work right back to Dawson Knox there. Nice job by Josh Allen, working through it, bang. Good timing, good route, sticking. Look at that, great job by Dawson Knox. Where are his eyes? Eyes are over here. Defender, reading your head. He thinks your eyes are over there, you're gonna run over there, sets him up with his eyes, and then comes back the other direction. Great job by the tight end there. Good job by Josh getting through this. Like the details to be a little bit better from a timing standpoint on the outside, but like the play design and good job by those two. 
turning this thing into a touchdown. All right, this is for all my weather enthusiasts. You guys know how I feel. Dome it all up, but I get it. I love playing in the snow when I was growing up. Uh, and, you know, this is cool to watch. Love the, the change of scenery. It just it looks really, really cool as a fan to watch this stuff. I'd just rather not play in it. Put me in a dome. Let me be at my best. But I get it. I understand the argument. It's not what this tape is about. So, uh, But I had to have a little bit of fun with it. All right, this play. Uh, I don't know if this is a read on the outside, but you're going to have a go route, route right here. And again, I don't know if it's a read. So like he has a go route, but if that corner is soft, he turns it into a stop or a comeback back here. But that's what happens. We get our go here. Okay, we get our middle read here. So this is a common play. Call it 989. Go, middle read or you know post down the middle with a go on the other side. But we're going to get a stop on the other side. So I, I like this. He could easily see the one-on-one. -on -one. Again, they're going to drop into robber. They're going to close the middle. So he's got his one-on-one -on -one opportunity against press coverage if he likes it backside. Okay. If he chooses not to go there, okay, this is never to me a, a great option. Um, a lot of times, you know, guys will, you know, run that kind of as a post. Other teams will turn this into an in route. If the middle is closed, instead of running into that safety, turning it into an in route. But However, it's really an outside play, but it's what I like about it is that Josh realizes that he decides not to go with the go right here and he's got this stop here, but here's what I love. What kind of throws can you make as a quarterback? All right. What's in your repertoire? It, because it, it changes everything on what you're capable of doing on a particular read. So if I don't have the ability to get this ball to go up and down, what I say up and down, get it up and over a defender uh, at, at a certain depth, but still have velocity, what I call firm but soft, okay, firm but soft, soft enough, I have enough touch to get it up and over, but it's firm enough that I'm not lollipopping this thing and it's not hanging in the air because I got to get it over somebody. Can you do this? You know, in qbconfidential.com, we talk about how you do this, how you engage your core and create the opportunity because you don't, don't have to make this throw with your arm, but, but can you do it? And that's why I put this on there. We got a defender that gets out underneath our stop route. And you've got to ask yourself as a quarterback, how deep can that guy be and I can still make the throw up over the top of him? If he can only be right here, then, okay, we're limited with what we can do. If he can only be right here, okay, we're limited. He starts to the point where he's getting deeper and deeper, and I still have the ability to make this throw. Now, my margin from air, of error increases. Okay? Can he be even deeper? How deep can he be that I can throw this ball up and over the top of him? But look at this. I love it. Look how deep he is. Okay? When we complete this, when the ball goes over the top of him, he's less than five yards from my receiver, less than five yards from my receiver. If you can make this throw, man, it's amazing what you can do. Because basically what it says is, man, the defense is going to have a tough time taking away what I'm capable of doing as a quarterback, right? That guy's got to get all the way to two yards away from my, you know, my receiver to take it away. So now if he gets two yards away from my receiver, oftentimes we're going to have something underneath him. And now we've got a big play, but I've increased my margin for error because I have the ability to get the ball up and down and drop it on my receiver and throw it up and over top people. Great throw right there by Josh Allen. Not everybody's got that throw. Quarterbacks, work on that throw. Coaches, work on those throws. Get that defender out there. Put him at five. Put him at seven. Put him at 10. Put him at 12. Teach yourself as a quarterback. Coaches, teach your quarterbacks what they're capable of doing so when they get out on the field, they understand who they're reading, and then on top of that, what does that defender need to do to take away this particular throw? All right, here we go. So it's a similar concept that we saw before. So we're going to run this in right here. We're going to run the under to this side. We're going to run the up and kind of choice here. And then we're going to run a comeback to the outside. So you guys remember me saying that our too high read is up top, 
So in other words, when we get one defender, so if we have just one defender to that side, we can high-low him to that side. We get two defenders to that side, we don't want to go there. We get two defenders, now we want to work this side because we've got our back over here, right? So now if we get two defenders to the top, we'll have two defenders underneath to the bottom. And so now those two defenders to the bottom, right? We've got one, two, three, and we'll work those two defenders with those three receivers. So just want you to watch right here. So you'll see it on the snap. They're dropping down once again. What I need to understand as a quarterback is that when they're dropping down, and to me it doesn't look like man coverage uh, right here because of you know some of the looks with um, you know with these guys being off and, and the matchups here doesn't look like man-to-man -man coverage. So I'm expecting zone. So if they're going to a three high, three high, they go into a one high zone, okay, usually becomes cover three. So these guys are going back to the deep thirds, middle guys taking the deep middle, they're dropping the safety down. So what usually happens when we get a middle closed zone is we're going to have two defenders to each side of the ball, okay? So outside defenders take the hook to flat, inside defenders, you know, work the, the middle to the hook area. So I have to assume when they're dropping that safety down to that side that somebody else is going to pop out. So I come back, that's the first thing that I'm peeking, okay? The only other guy that can really be, so again, ball's here. The only other guy that can really drop into the zone on this side with that safety coming down is this defensive end. So as I come out, that's the first thing I'm gonna look at as a quarterback, okay? I come down, I see the rotation, see the safety coming down. Does that guy drop off? Because if that guy drops off, now we've got two defenders to that side and we're running right into coverage, I don't like it. So I'd like to go back to this side and again, I'm gonna read this defender, right? It's all about numbers when you're playing against zone coverage. Where do I have the advantage? I'm gonna read that outside defender. If he goes wide to the stop, I'll work back to the hook. Then if that next defender works to the hook, then I'll drop it down here to my back. So Josh gets fooled here a little bit, and I understand, it's tough, right? This guy looks like a defensive end. I think he's going to rush. So with that, this guy's dropping down. I know he's thinking, I'm gonna hit that under right now. And, and I, I see exactly why. But this is what's tough about this league now is they've got these flexible guys at defensive ends. So they can look like they're going to rush. Then they drop into coverage. I got to be able to see that on the snap where they drop that safety down. I got to look to that area that I'm trying to hit. See if that guy pops out. If he pops out, get back to the other side as quick as you possibly can. So he goes there. He's looking there. Ah, doesn't have it, right? We got bodies there. We got bodies. Okay, so... They fooled us, right? They fooled us with the coverage. They bounced out. It happens. But what I love about this play is he realizes it and then he works back to the other side. So again, you see it, right? So here's the isolation that we get. He works back to the other side and finds that backer once he gets back here. Works back, right? That backer chases and stays tucked inside. Boom. Work back to that comeback here. Great job working through this and making a play. I don't know, this guy might have been running the go route like we saw earlier in the hook there, and they just adjust and come off of it. But I would like that better on this play, is put this guy on an inside hook, put this guy on a comeback, put this back real tight there, so now I can work these two defenders against three. That's how it kind of plays out here. So fooled a little bit, works back, makes a throw to the outside off of the coverage, Really like the way that he progressed through it. All right, and then we finish right here. Again, what do you see? Okay. Quarterback, what do you see, right? Looking back here first, where are the safeties? Safeties are down, safeties are down. Everybody's up, everybody's up. Critical situation, they're gonna bring blitz zero. So what it looks like, this safety's coming down, probably gonna cover the back. We got everybody walked up, we're gonna try 
to overload you and get somebody free and force you to throw it quick. We're going to press here and make it hard for you to get a quick throw. And hopefully we can win this down by forcing you to make a bad throw right here. Okay. So here's what I love. Okay. Here's what I love. This is going to turn out to be, um, you know, a pass interference call. We're going to try to run this rub here and get McKenzie down the sideline. I like the play call. All of it's really good. We got good options, right? We get everything we want. We get this guy to drop underneath because we get in his way and we get that. But the key to this play to me is this guy right here. Okay. And these are the little things that are so important. I understand I have blitz zero. I understand somebody's probably going to come free as a quarterback. What we need to do is buy time, buy time, buy time. So you have to buy time and time it up with when you think you can make this throw. What we don't want to do is we don't want to catch it and set closer to the pressure and then we have to wait for our receiver to get open. We know that somebody's probably going to come free. You got to drop away. You got to fade away from the pressure. But it's vital that when you fade away from the pressure, you don't throw the ball fading away. You've got to fade away, fade away, and then when it's time to throw, quickly set your feet and drive your throw down the field. But Josh does a good job here. See how he's fading away, fading away, fading away, buying time, buying time, buying time, because here comes that pressure. If he sets up sooner, right, if he sets up right here, this guy's going to hit him before he has a chance to throw that. Buys time, gets away from the pressure, buys time, buys time, and then settles his feet and gets his body into the throw and gets it down there enough that they get a huge defensive pass interference call, set him up for the game-winning kick, but great job, and it's just a little nuance. Blitz zero, I know somebody's gonna come free. I've got to mesh my drop and my throw to the timing of the route. Otherwise, if I'm waiting back in the pocket, they're probably gonna get to me. Does a great job right here. Buying time, dropping back, engaging his core, getting the ball out, and setting him up for the game-winning kick. All right, so there you go. Uh, the guy's a freak. Right, he's the human GCP. You saw it play after play after play, even plays when he didn't make the layups. There was things to be had, um, you know, places where he can still grow. But he makes up for him a lot of times that you know other quarterbacks can't. And he, you know, he saves us. He saves himself from missing a particular read, but but making a play. But he also does a lot of really really good things. He sees a lot of things, and it's why he's talented, right? He, he, he's special with the way that he can run and throw and, and buy time and make throws off bat, all that stuff. But he also understands what he's doing a lot of the time. And, and he makes a lot of good reads and good throws on time because of that. And so he's still growing. He's still getting better. That's the scary part. But I wanted to show this because like a lot of guys, right? You know, he's going to miss some things. He's still young. He's still learning. But because he, he, he makes up for that, that process can continue to work in his favor. For those guys that aren't as talented, we got to do more of those little things, and that's really why I make these tapes, is to show you, talk you through the little details. What are we looking at? Coaches, right? Play calls, play designs. That helps a quarterback immensely, okay? Quarterbacks, know where your eyes need to be on the different looks. That's the whole key, is understand what I'm seeing. Where do I need to get my eyes on the snap? Who do I need to see to get that initial read and then move from there. That's what quarterback is all about. That's what playing the position is all about. It's not easy. I know it's not easy. A lot of stuff to see in a short period of time, but these guys are playing at the highest level. I played at the highest level. It can be done. It can be done. I promise you it can be done. The great ones do it, but it's hard. So all about teaching, all about showing you guys, Josh Allen is doing great things. He's playing great football. He's making big play after big play and Areas where they can continue to grow and get better. And that's what excites you is that the sky is the limit for the Bills with Josh Allen behind center. And they can still get better from where they're at right now.